the sun beats down on the beautiful countries of Central America. The warm and bountiful waters of Central America nurture a host of creatures, from large mammals to unique underwater marine life. The jungles and deserts of the region also support a great variety of uniquely evolved natural wonders. This land is like a great bridge connecting the ecosystems of the north with those of the south. The Yucatan Peninsula juts out into the sea like a great partition separating North and South America. Taking up the southeastern part of the peninsula, the country of Belize faces the beautiful, warm waters of the Caribbean Sea. Unfolding in the blue waters off the coast is the Belize Barrier Reef Reserve System, which extends for more than 260 kilometers. The largest coral reef in the Northern Hemisphere, the Belize Barrier Reef System, is an oceanic paradise full of an extraordinary variety of marine life. Water temperatures remain above 20 degrees Celsius throughout the year in these coral-rich waters. Corals are cnidarians, a phylum of marine animals characterized by their stinging tentacles. This phylum also includes such marine life as sea anemone and jellyfish. Algae, which are aquatic organisms, provide nutrition to coral reefs by carrying out photosynthesis. This seaweed-like undulating life form is referred to as a soft coral. There are two types of coral, hard coral, which has a hard skeleton, and soft coral, which does not. The Caribbean Sea is unique in the world for its great variety of soft corals, presenting the diver with scenes not visible anywhere else on Earth. Stretching just off the coast of Belize, the long coral reef sits like a great underwater wall, separating land from the sea. Coral reefs which form along coastlines like this one are referred to as barrier reefs. The Belize Barrier Reef is the second largest barrier reef on the planet, following Australia's Great Barrier Reef. Because coral reefs support a great variety of marine life, they are sometimes referred to as the tropical rainforests of the sea. Indeed, Many aquatic animals, including fish, benefit greatly from the effects of coral reefs. This nurse shark is two meters in length and very gentle. The Nassau grouper, a grouper fish, is indigenous to the waters of the Caribbean. Another indigenous species to the Caribbean Sea is the French angelfish, which, as its name suggests, is part of the angelfish family. The Belize coral reef seems to stretch on endlessly. Underwater, one happens upon all sorts of mysterious scenes. This is called a blue hole. It is a gigantic sinkhole at the bottom of the sea.
The blue hole has a diameter of 318 meters and a depth of 135 meters. One cannot help but wonder how or why such a huge sinkhole could have developed at the bottom of the sea. The key to understanding the reason lies hidden in the depths of the blue hole. The hole itself is more than 100 meters deep. Descending into the hole, on the rock walls of the sinkhole, we see hints that indicate something of the geological factors that produce this phenomenon. About 40 meters down, we encounter stalactite formations. This huge subterranean cave was formed around 20,000 years ago during the last ice age, when the surface of the ocean was 100 meters lower than it is today. At that time, the limestone terrain experienced erosive processes, which produced what became a huge cave. It is thought that the cave became vertical after the ceiling fell off. Then, approximately 16,000 years ago, when the Ice Age ended and the sea levels rose, all this went underwater. Stalactite cannot form in seawater. These formations, which are quite large, must have taken many tens of thousands of years to complete. A tremendous vertical cave, it lies quietly at the bottom of the sea, a reminder that all this was once part of the land. Scattered in the waters around the reef are approximately 400 scattered coral atolls, called keys. One of the most famous of these keys is Half Moon Key. The forested areas of the island serve as a huge breeding ground for birds. Red-footed boobies are large-sized seabirds, 70 to 80 centimeters in length. This red-footed booby is roosting its eggs to keep them warm. The magnificent frigate birds have distinctive red throat pouches. The rich ocean waters nurture not only marine life, but bird life as well. A mangrove forest covers Half Moon Key. Mangrove trees are able to grow along the seashore by filtering out the salt out of the seawater through their leaves. The roots of mangrove trees spread in the water like an underwater jungle. Large creatures are unable to swim in these shallow waters, making it an ideal refuge for small fish. Some unique creatures inhabit these waters. This is the upside-down jellyfish. This creature, a short-nosed batfish, belongs to the Lophidae family. They swim by moving their pectoral and pelvic fins like legs.
Belize's coral reef system is an important refuge for many endangered species. American manatees are mammals that mainly eat seaweed, such as eelgrass. Manatees must come up to the water's surface to breathe, about once every five minutes. This manatee must have finished eating and is now sleeping with its face buried in the soft mud. which manatees thrive on, is only able to grow in clean, shallow waters, like the waters of Belize. This is one reason why the Belize Barrier Reef Reserve System is the world's largest refuge of American manatees. Stunning atolls and rich marine life, the Belize Barrier Reef System is a spectacular natural wonder in the pristine, warm waters of the Caribbean Sea. Cuba is often called the Pearl of the Caribbean. A long, narrow island, Cuba extends 1,200 kilometers from east to west and is the largest island in the Caribbean Sea. In the eastern part of this mostly flat country, approximately 800 kilometers east of the capital of Havana, is a chain of 1,000 meter high mountains. Located amongst these mountains and extending out toward the coast is Cuba's Alejandro de Humboldt National Park, which occupies approximately 700 square kilometers. Here, in the thick forest surrounded by mountains, various species of rare animals and plants can be found. This area lies in the subtropical climate zone and supports a wide variety of vegetation. The forests of Alejandro de Humboldt National Park are full of colorful birds. Cuba's national bird is the tocororo, or Cuban trogon, endemic to Cuba it has striking red, blue, and white wings, colors which were adopted for the Cuban flag. The Cuban toady is the same size as a sparrow. This colorful bird, one of the famous birds of Cuba, is also endemic to this area. This is a Cuban crow.
as many as 95 species of birds, ranging from endemic species to migratory birds, have been confirmed in the park. These are mangrove trees. White rock stands out against the dark hills adjacent to the mangrove forest. This white rock is limestone. Up until some 40 million years ago, this entire area was at the bottom of the sea. Cuba is, therefore, composed of limestone formed from coral reefs of the ocean. The island was at one time connected to the South American continent and it is thought to have separated from the continent due to a great rise in sea levels several million years ago. Cuba, long isolated from the mainland, has evolved in many unique ways. There is a place in the park where one can see rocks with distinct patterns. Called serpentine rock, they are metamorphic rocks from the Earth's mantle. This rock is rarely found on the Earth's surface, and due to certain toxic minerals present in serpentine rock, the surrounding soil is not suitable for plant life. Dracaena cubensis, however, have adapted themselves to be able to grow here. This species has adapted leaves that can store more water than similar species growing elsewhere. These are poinsettias. The red flowers are actually not flowers, but red leaves. The plant's flowers are the tiny yellow blossoms in the center. The surface of their small but thick leaves include a wax component that prevents moisture from evaporating. There are other species of plants in the park that have adapted themselves to the deficiency in nutrients by obtaining what nutrients they need in very different and unique ways. These are carnivorous plants, which catch, kill, and digest insects to obtain nutrition. Butterwort, which has flowers resembling violets, is one of the carnivorous plants in the park. The plant produces small flowers that are less than one centimeter in diameter. Its leaves have minute hairs covered with mucilage. This sticky substance catches insects and digests them with the aid of digestive enzymes. The island's distinctive environment has propagated a unique evolution in plants and animals. There are several species of animals that can only be found in Cuba. This frog, belonging to the Eleutherodactylus family, has a unique life cycle. When hatching out of its egg, instead of being born as a tadpole, this creature is born as a frog.
This tiny frog, resting on a fallen leaf, is less than one centimeter long. Elithrodactylus iberia is considered to be the smallest frog in the world. This new species was only discovered in 1996. There is another unique creature under the fallen leaves. Its appearance resembles that of a scorpion, but is of a completely different and new variety. Called a vinegaroon, it does not have poison, but rather protects itself by emitting a mist from the base of its tail. There is also a rich variety of creatures that make their homes beneath the surface of the earth in the park. These underground creatures include bees that make nests underground. Interesting reptiles are also found in the park as well. A member of the iguana family this reptile is an Anolis baracoa and is equipped with specialized toe pads that enable it to stick to even the very tips of leaves. Some 83% of the unique reptiles that have been confirmed in the park are endemic to Cuba. Another unique creature of Cuba's Alejandro de Humboldt National Park are its snails. This snail on the leaf is a baby snail, which is also indigenous to Cuba. Since the migration range of the snail family is extremely restricted, snails are classified by area. As many as 2,000 types of snails have been found that are endemic to Cuba. This park is also the habitat of what is considered one of the world's most beautiful snails. This is a Cuban polymita. It is nibbling on some mold growing on a leaf. The natural enemies of snails are birds. Why then are they so colorful? Their coloring seems to be a disadvantage to their survival, and indeed, the answer remains one of the many unsolved mysteries of the forest. The Alejandro de Humboldt National Park possesses what is truly uniquely evolved flora and fauna. In this vast park, there remain many creatures that have yet to be studied. This island, lying in the stunning Caribbean Ocean, is thought to be a place with a multitude of as yet undiscovered species. Mexico is a vast country occupying the southern part of the North American continent. With its humid rainforests and dry deserts, the country has a climate that greatly varies from region to region. Situated in the northwestern part of Mexico, the 1,200 kilometer long and narrow Baja California Peninsula is extremely dry, characterized by a wide difference in temperature between day and night. Two large coastal lagoons located in the central park of the Baja California Peninsula were registered as a World Heritage Site in 1993. 
This is the whale sanctuary of El Vizcaino. One of these lagoons, the Laguna Ojo de Libre, sits in the middle of the world's largest salt production field, located here for its extremely dry climate. Surrounded by white sands, the 9-kilometer-wide, 48-kilometer-long inlet is a calm lagoon with shallow waters. Every year, certain creatures make their way to these warm waters to pass the winter. These are the gray whales of El Vizcaino. Each year in December, as many as 1,000 whales descend on the waters here to give birth and raise their calves. Gray whales can grow to be 14 meters in length and can weigh up to 35 tons. Gray whales spend the summer months in northern seas, such as Alaska's Bering Sea. In the winter, they travel south some 8,000 kilometers to arrive at the warm waters of the Baja California Peninsula, making them the furthest migrating mammals on Earth. A whale suddenly pokes its head straight up out of the water. This action is called a spy hop, and it is a whale's unique way of checking out the surface of the water. Gray whales are said to check their current position this way during long migrations. Between late December and February is the birthing season for the gray whale. A newborn calf is roughly skimming its tail fin along the surface of the water. Young whale calves are unable to swim well at first, and so their mothers swim right up alongside them. This calf does not yet have barnacles attached to its body like its mother does. The wrinkles seen all over the calf's body indicates that it was just born. Newborn whales measure between 4 and 5 meters in length and can weigh as much as 500 kilograms. Gray whales can stay underwater for a maximum of 15 minutes. Whale calves, however, which are still not proficient swimmers, are incapable of holding their breath for so long and need to come up to breathe frequently. Mothers often help hoist their calves up to the water's surface so they can easily take a breath of air. This area once saw extensive whale hunting and the animals were hunted almost to the point of extinction. However, since the total ban on whale hunting has been enacted, their numbers have steadily increased, and currently there are more than 20,000 gray whales that come to the waters of the Baja California Peninsula. The fighting of several males is creating waves on the surface of the sea. Many whales mate during their migration to the waters of the Baja California Peninsula, but some prefer to mate after arriving. Female whales become pregnant in these waters and return one year later to give birth.
In addition to gray whales, many other kinds of animals can be found in the reserve. These animals sporting playfully with each other in the water are California sea lions. A large buoy serves as a resting place for some of them. In addition to California sea lions, one can also see northern elephant seals and bottlenose dolphins in these waters. Around the lagoon is a vast desert and wetlands area. The quiet wetlands area is a place in which few humans enter. It is an oasis for water birds. These marbled godwits, which dwell in this habitat year-round, use their long beaks to pull out food from the mud. This wetlands area is also an important wintering place for migrating birds. Every winter, 10% of the wild birds that migrate to Mexico pass the winter in the wetlands here. Brent geese and American white pelicans are among the many species of birds that pass the winter here. After some time has passed, a whale calf grows bigger and stronger and is able to swim in parallel to its mother. The warm and mild Baja Sea gently protects the calf that still hasn't stored sufficient blubber. This is also a safe place for the gray whales to raise their young, as their natural enemy, the orca whale, is not present in these waters. However, in April, when the season for returning to the northern seas arrives, many of the whales never make the trip back north and instead die here in these waters. The dead whale bodies wash up cold on the beach, becoming food for other creatures. These creatures may well go on to become the food of future whales as the circle of life quietly continues in the sea. In this sea, a unique relationship has been formed between humans and whales. Gray whales approach humans without fear. The gray whale looks up at the people from the water below the boat. It is not expecting any tasty handouts, but rather approaches the boat out of sheer curiosity. Indeed, in these warm waters, Sometimes it seems like whales are enjoying people watching as much as the people are enjoying whale watching. A mother approaches the boat with her calf. In 
the Baja waters, whales do not even mind when humans reach out to touch them. With its stunning desert landscape and rich marine life, the Whale Sanctuary of El Vizcaino serves not only as a protected breeding ground for grey whales to raise their young, but also stands as a safe place for humans and grey whales to interact. On November 3, 1493, during the Great Age of Discovery, Christopher Columbus happened upon a small island in the Caribbean Sea. Since it was a Sunday, he named the island Dominica, which means Sunday in Latin. The Commonwealth of Dominica, located in the southeastern part of the West Indies, is a small country with a circumference of only 148 kilometers. The country only won its independence from England in 1978. About 70,000 people live on this small island where agriculture, particularly the cultivation of bananas, is the main industry. In the southern part of the island, Montois Piton Mountain hides its 1,342-meter height behind gathering clouds. The 69 square kilometers surrounding Montois Piton, an active volcano, were inscribed as a World Heritage Site in 1997 for the area's unique geological features and for its rich biodiversity. The islands of the Caribbean were born 25 million years ago as a result of volcanic activity, Dominica being one of these islands. Mountains on the island rise up from the coast and form a spine-like chain down the middle of the island. Moisture-laden trade winds, blowing in from the Atlantic Ocean, bump up against the mountains, resulting in plenty of rain. Warm temperatures and abundant rainfall from the Caribbean Sea, as well as the volcanic conditions on the island, have created an island full of lush forests. Tropical rainforests full of palm trees and ferns cover most of the island. One of the trees dominating the forest is the Chatainye, a tree which stands about 40 meters tall. The tree roots, called buttress roots, grow to be shaped like thick planks of wood. Due to warm temperatures and heavy rainfall, tropical rainforest soil is quite thin. Therefore, the trees developed roots like these to support their weight and draw in nutrients from the thin soil. In 1980, a large hurricane devastated most of the forest. The hot and humid climate, however, allowed for a speedy revival. Hercules beetles are said to inhabit these forests. The beetle, which has huge horns, is the world's largest beetle, measuring some 15 centimeters in length.
Many colorful birds can also be seen in the park. The purple-throated carib is a hummingbird that is indigenous to the Caribbean. These hummingbirds are tiny birds that hover by beating their wings dozens of times per second in order to suck nectar from a flower, resembling bees more than birds in the process. This bird, a trembler, is named for its behavior of trembling its wings. This unique behavior is thought to send certain signals to its friends. Measuring 40 centimeters in length, the red-necked parrot is an indigenous species that inhabits Dominica. It is said that 10,000 millimeters of rain fall annually on Mornois Piton Mountain, and it is the base of the mountain that regularly receives the benefits of all this water. Emerald Pool is a small waterfall, six meters high. The basin is a popular sightseeing spot in which people can swim. Middleham Falls is the island's largest waterfall, with water loudly spilling over the falls some 60 meters down. there is a creature that dwells at the bottom of the swiftly moving stream. Called a river crab, it has long nails and a 20 centimeter shell, and is a frequent guest on the dinner tables of people across the island. Freshwater Lake is the largest lake in Dominica, lying at an altitude of 800 meters. There is a legend that this is a bottomless lake in which a one-eyed giant lives. There is a place in the mountains within the park which stands as a clear reminder of the volcanic history of the island. This valley, called the Valley of Desolation, is dotted with fumaroles from which volcanic gas is emitted. In 1880, Sudden volcanic activity completely devastated the tropical rainforest in this area. In the valley thick with white smoke and the smell of sulfur, there are holes filled with hot spring water and many fumaroles. The rocks vary in color because of the highly acidic hot water. In 1880, there was an eruption of volcanic gas, and all the plants disappeared from this valley. 
Today, those plants capable of surviving in the poor soil have migrated here from other places and have taken root. These types of plants are called pioneer plants. At the center of the park, white smoke can be seen rising from the mountain. This mysterious natural phenomenon is representative of the landscape of Montois Piton. This is Boiling Lake in which temperatures can reach up to 95 degrees Celsius. Along with these incredibly high temperatures, the lake emits volcanic gas containing hydrosulfuric acid and carbon dioxide from its center. This lake, which has a diameter of 60 meters, is the world's second largest hot spring. Its precise depth still remains unclear. Due to its high temperature, as well as its strong acidity, neither plant nor animal life is present in the lake, or even within the lake's surrounding areas. Piton National Park. Located on this small volcanic island, the park offers a rare glimpse of both the fiery powers lying quietly within the Earth's crust, at the same time showing us a truly beautiful landscape in which vast waters have nurtured rich, luxurious green forests as far as the eye can see. The Republic of Panama is a country located in the southernmost tip of Central America. Along its border, with Colombia on the easternmost edge, is Darien National Park. Boasting an area of 5,970 square kilometers, the park is Central America's largest national park and contains a rich variety of natural habitats from mangrove forests along the coast to tropical rainforests and mist-covered forests inland. For most of their geological history, the North and South American continents were separated from each other. It was only in more recent history, approximately three million years ago, that these two giant continents became attached. When this happened, their ecosystems also became connected. This can vividly be seen in Darien National Park, where the flora and fauna of North and South America are both represented. Mantled howler monkeys originally came from South America. Their calls can be heard from as far as three kilometers away. Howler monkeys are the largest monkeys on the American continent, reaching 10 kilograms in weight. The white-headed capuchin is considered to be highly intelligent.
brown spider monkeys are able to use their tails adeptly, just like a hand or a foot. The white-nosed coati, a member of the raccoon family, is also originally from the South American continent. Most of the animals confirmed in the park are creatures from South America. There is, however, one notable exception. The gray fox, originally from North America, is steadily increasing its numbers in Darien National Park. Changes in the ecosystem, which occurred when the two great continents connected, continue even today. More than 450 species of birds have been confirmed in the park. The blue and yellow macaw, with its colorful lazuli-colored wings, is a common bird in South and Central America. The great jacamar has metal-colored wings. Perched on a branch, it has a clear view of the surrounding forest, adeptly smashing large insects against branches before devouring them. Birds live in close relation with the plants of the forest. The staple food of the toucan, known for its big colorful beak, is fruit. Toucans scatter plant seeds they are not able to digest in their bird droppings, which fall on the forest floor. By facilitating the birds eating as much of their fruit as possible, plants are able to spread themselves over a wide area of the forest. The staple food of hummingbirds of the forest is nectar, and the birds have evolved beaks of various shapes and sizes according to the shape of their favorite flower. The plants have also evolved in order to meet the hummingbird's needs. For example, in order to have their pollen distributed by certain species of hummingbirds, this tree has flowers whose shape matches that of the hummingbird's beak. It is indeed a give-and-take relationship between the plants and the birds of the forest. Certain birds within the forest make good use of still-standing dead trees. This woodpecker builds its nest in large dead trees in which it can easily peck holes. In the world of nature, there is no waste, not in life nor in death. Interesting relationships exist between certain plants found in the tropical rainforest. This plant, belonging to the fig family, strangles a large tree. Because it often fully squeezes and destroys big trees, it is called a strangler. To work against these stranglers, trees make themselves harder to fell by entwining their trunks with each other in order to spread their roots more firmly within the soil. Other fascinating creatures found in the forest, if one looks hard enough, are insects of various shapes and colors.
Among these insects, there are those that have some very interesting social habits. A marching line of green ants crosses through the tropical rainforest. This group of leaf-cutting ants makes use of the forest's leaves by first cutting them into small pieces. Instead of eating the leaves, they carry them to their nests where they use them to cultivate mushroom mold by biting the leaves into smaller pieces and depositing the mushroom mold in them for harvesting. The ants ingeniously cut the leaves off the plants using their small chins and seem to effortlessly lift up these cut leaves, which are several times larger than their bodies, to carry to their nest. In order to collect leaves suitable for fungus cultivation, they sometimes travel in procession as far as several hundred meters. It is said that in some of the largest colonies there are more than 5 million working ants. These large colonies can be up to 6 meters deep and have a diameter of 20 meters. These leaf-cutting ants are truly amazing and unique insects that work together in large groups to cultivate food. forests of Darien National Park are so deep, they seem to rebuff humans from daring to enter. However, there was once a city in the center of the park, which had a population of more than 10,000 during the 1800s. There used to be gold mines here and British miners traveled all the way to this backland to pursue their get-rich-quick schemes. The mines were closed after some 20 years, after which the forest once again took over. Currently, there are several birds in the park that are in danger of becoming extinct. The red-throated caracara, belonging to the falcon family, is one of these birds. While many species of birds have been greatly reduced in other regions, Many have been confirmed as thriving in Darien National Park. Harpy eagles are birds of prey common in Panama. More than one meter long and possessing a highly dignified appearance, the numbers of this eagle have also been drastically reduced due to hunting and forest development. in South America, Darien National Park serves as one of the last places of refuge for many of the New World's endangered creatures. Tens of thousands of years to complete. A tremendous vertical cave, it lies quietly at the bottom of the sea, a reminder that all this was once part of the land. Scattered in the waters around the reef are approximately 400 scattered coral atolls, called keys.
One of the most famous of these keys is Half Moon Key. The forested areas of the island serve as a huge breeding ground for birds. Red-footed boobies are large-sized seabirds, 70 to 80 centimeters in length. This red-footed booby is roosting its eggs to keep them warm. The magnificent frigate birds have distinctive red throat pouches. The rich ocean waters nurture not only marine life, but bird life as well. A mangrove forest covers Half Moon Key. Mangrove trees are able to grow along the seashore by filtering out the salt out of the seawater through their leaves. The roots of mangrove, the Belize coral reef seems to stretch on endlessly. Underwater, one happens upon all sorts of mysterious scenes. This is called a blue hole. It is a gigantic sinkhole at the bottom of the sea. The blue hole has a diameter of 318 meters and a depth of 135 meters. One cannot help but wonder how or why such a huge sinkhole could have developed at the bottom of the sea. The key to understanding the reason lies hidden in the depths of the blue hole. The hole itself is more than 100 meters deep. Descending into the hole, on the rock walls of the sinkhole, we see hints that indicate something of the geological factors that produce this phenomenon. About 40 meters down, we encounter stalactite formations. This huge subterranean cave was formed around 20,000 years ago during the last ice age, when the surface of the ocean was 100 meters lower than it is today. At that time, the limestone terrain experienced erosive processes, which produced what became a huge cave. It is thought that the cave became vertical after the ceiling fell off. Then, approximately 16,000 years ago, when the ice age ended and the sea levels rose, all this went underwater. Stalactite cannot form in seawater. These formations, which are quite large, must have taken many times.
the sun beats down on the beautiful countries of Central America. The warm and bountiful waters of Central America nurture a host of creatures, from large mammals to unique underwater marine life. The jungles and deserts of the region also support a great variety of uniquely evolved natural wonders. This land is like a great bridge connecting the ecosystems of the north with those of the south. The Yucatan Peninsula juts out into the sea like a great partition separating North and South America. Taking up the southeastern part of the peninsula, the country of Belize faces the beautiful, warm waters of the Caribbean Sea. Unfolding in the blue waters off the coast is the Belize Barrier Reef Reserve System, which extends for more than 260 kilometers. The largest coral reef in the Northern Hemisphere, the Belize Barrier Reef System, is an oceanic paradise full of an extraordinary variety of marine life. Water temperatures remain above 20 degrees Celsius throughout the year in these coral-rich waters. Corals are cnidarians, a phylum of marine animals characterized by their stinging tentacles. This phylum also includes such marine life as sea anemone and jellyfish. Algae, which are aquatic organisms, provide nutrition to coral reefs by carrying out photosynthesis. This seaweed-like undulating life form is referred to as a soft coral. There are two types of coral, hard coral, which has a hard skeleton, and soft coral, which does not. The Caribbean Sea is unique in the world for its great variety of soft corals, presenting the diver with scenes not visible anywhere else on Earth. Stretching just off the coast of Belize, the long coral reef sits like a great underwater wall, separating land from the sea. Coral reefs which form along coastlines like this one are referred to as barrier reefs. The Belize Barrier Reef is the second largest barrier reef on the planet, following Australia's Great Barrier Reef. Because coral reefs support a great variety of marine life, they are sometimes referred to as the tropical rainforests of the sea. Indeed, Many aquatic animals, including fish, benefit greatly from the effects of coral reefs. This nurse shark is two meters in length and very gentle. The Nassau grouper, a grouper fish, is indigenous to the waters of the Caribbean. Another indigenous species to the Caribbean Sea is the French angelfish, which, as its name suggests, is part of the angelfish family.